JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, two people taken to hospital after Otteria's crash. Two people have been rushed to the hospital following a two-vehicle collision along a section of the Otteria's bypass in St. Anne sometime after 1 p.m. on Sunday. It is understood that a white BMW motor car was traveling in an easterly direction when the driver lost control of the vehicle and slammed into a red Toyota motor car traveling in the opposite direction. Teen dies in St. Mary crash. A road traffic crash claimed the life of a 19-year-old woman in St. Mary yesterday evening. She has been identified as Percy and Lee. According to reports, Lee was among at least three occupants of a vehicle when the driver encountered difficulties resulting in a crash. The occupants were taken to hospital where Lee was pronounced dead. A male companion sustained serious injuries and remains hospitalized. The Anatomy Police are investigating. Portland cops say a businessman killed there was a violence influencer. The Portland police are reporting that Courtney Alexander Clark, the businessman who was gone down there on Saturday morning, was one of the parish's violence influencers and had been charged four times with car stealing. The 56-year-old shopkeeper, otherwise called Frank, was also under the police's watch after he was recently released from prison after serving a sentence relative to car stealing. Amid it all, Clark was reportedly determined to stick to the right path following his run-ins with the law, sources who knew him well have said. Those purported ambitions were dashed when Clark became the 12th person to be killed in the northeastern parish this year. But head of the Portland Police, Superintendent Lloyd Darby, told reporters on the weekend that Clark remained under their radar following his recent release from prison. The deceased is well known to the Portland police. It was one of her violence influencers, and records show that he had been charged at least four times for a large time for motor vehicle in Portland, said the parish commander. He also outlined that Clark had been charged once for illegal possession of ammunition and once for shooting with intent in St. Catherine. Darby said the last time that Clark was charged was in 2021, for larceny of a motor vehicle in Portland. Despite its criminal history, the police have not yet determined if that was a factor in the businessman's killing. Reports are that about 1 a.m. on Saturday, Clark was closing his corner shop in his Snow Hill community when he was approached by a gunman and shot several times. He was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Don Killer Freed a man who admitted to killing a so-called Donny St. Catherine during a beating was on Thursday cleared of a murder charge and freed by the corporate era gun court after a judge ruled that the witnesses brought by the crown were not credible and accepted his claim of self-defense. The man, who had been charged on an indictment containing four counts, illegal possession of firearm, murder, shooting with intent and wounding with intent, had been in custody since 2016 for the killing. The Crown's case revolved around two main witnesses who gave evidence that on the day of the incident, the former accused was at Joe Blaine in Spanish Town with several individuals. According to one witness, he was at the location when he saw the accused walking along the lane, stepping hard. The witness testified that the former accused looked at him and said, Pretty the player, then walked towards where the alleged Iradon was sitting in his car. Reaching to his waist, produced a gun and fired. According to the witness, he started running. The second witness also gave the court a similar account. However, the accused, in his own defense, gave sworn evidence telling the court that the night before that shooting, he was called by one of the witnesses to go to the lane to speak with the Don. He said when he got to the lane, he was beaten by several men and was told by the Don that the beating was his punishment for molesting his own niece. According to the man, he returned home after the beating and woke up to find his bicycle missing. He said he made a report to the police about his bicycle before heading to the hospital to get treatment for injuries sustained the night before. He claimed that upon returning home, he was again summoned and told that the Don wanted to speak with him. According to the former accused, when he went, he was told that he was summoned because he had taken their names to the police. He said he was again beaten. He claimed that during the beating, he disarmed one of the men and started to fire shots in his own defense and ended up killing the Don. On Thursday, Supreme Court Judge Justice Dayton Pusey, in handing down the ruling, said, This is a case in which the major facts are not in contest. Mr. X, not his real name, does not contest that he took a gun and fired and killed 
Mr. Y, name withheld. He does not deny that he was firing shots. His defense is that he was acting in reasonable self-defense. So the issues in this matter are very narrow. The question of the credibility of the Cohen's witnesses, and even if I accept the evidence of Mr. X, whether or not he was acting in self-defense, Justice Pusey said. In noting the arguments made by defense attorney Tamika Harris during a no-case submission, Justice Pusey, who had ruled that there was no case to answer, said he had found that the witnesses were not credible. I did not believe that these were persons upon whom I could rely, Justice Pusey stated, pointing to what he said were inconsistencies in their statements that made both witnesses dubious. According to the judge, he found the accused a more credible witness of the incident than the actual witnesses against him. In declaring that the former accused man's assertion of self-defense was accepted, Justice Pusey pronounced him not guilty on all four counts. The court found that you acted in self-defense. You're free to go, Justice Pusey told the relieved-looking man, who sat for several moments before exiting the dock. Kingston man arrested in connection with gun and ammo seizure. A man was arrested in connection with the siege of an illegal handgun and several rounds of ammunition in Rosetown, Kingston 13 on Saturday. Reports from the Denham Town Police are that between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. an operation was conducted at Harry Street in the community during the search of a premises, a high point, 9mm pistol and 8 9mm rounds of ammunition were seized. One man was arrested. His identity has been withheld at this time. Investigations are ongoing, the police said. Over in St. Catherine, a 9mm pistol and two rounds of ammunition were seized during an operation in the Waterford area of Geisel, St. Catherine on Saturday. Reports from the Geisel police are that about 9.18 p.m. Lawmen were on an operation when the firm containing the ammunition was found in an old stove. One man was arrested in connection with the seizure. However, his identity has been withheld pending further investigations. Phone thieves sentenced to nine months in prison. Kingston and St. Andrew's Senior Parish Judge Lorian Cole Montague on Thursday lamented the need to send a strong message to cell phone thieves. Judge Cole Montague, during the sentencing of Malik Palmer and Javier Reed, to nine months each for robbery with aggravation and three months each for malicious destruction of property, highlighted the frequent commission of the offense. The sentences are to run concurrently. Prior to sentencing, Judge Cole Montague observed that the complainant must have been traumatized by the brazen attack. Reed and Palmer, who have been in custody, apologized for their actions. The court was told that in September, the complainant was walking along a road when Reed and Palmer carried out the robbery. An off-duty police officer was nearby and saw what was happening and intervened, resulting in the men being arrested and charged. 20-year-old Sentan Man charged with murder. 20-year-old Nation Nelson of Retreat District, Brownstown, St. Anne, was charged with murder, following an incident which occurred in his community on Tuesday, December 13. That is 25-year-old Daniel Codner of Retreat District, Brownstown, in the parish. Reports indicate that about 10 p.m., Codner was along the roadway when an argument developed between him and Nelson. During the argument, a ratchet knife was brought into play and Codner received stab wounds all over his body. Codner was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Nelson was subsequently charged on Thursday, December 15, following a question and answer interview. Clarendon man charged with abduction and robbery with aggravation. A 22 year old construction worker in Clarendon has been charged with forcible abduction and robbery with aggravation following an incident in Maypen, Clarendon, on Saturday, January 15. He is Romario Edwards of Osborne Store in the parish. Detectives report that about 1.50 p.m., a woman was walking along Johnson Lane in Maypen when a Nissan 80 wagon with two men aboard drove up beside her. It is alleged that armed men ordered her to enter the vehicle. She was taken to an abandoned building where she was allegedly robbed of $13,500 and a cell phone. The woman managed to escape and was assisted to a police station by residents where a report was made. On Monday, December 12, lawmen were on an operation during the state of public emergency when Edwards was arrested. It was positively pointed out during an identification parade on Friday, December 16, and subsequently charged. His court date is being finalized. Single mother gifted with new home for Christmas. After experiencing what she described as a difficult year in 2022, during which she battled 
stage 2 cervical cancer. While living in less than ideal conditions, Sidney Eldermeyers received the gift of a brand new house for Christmas. The two-bedroom unit, situated in Tower Hill, St. Andrew West Central, was constructed at a cost of $6 million and donated by ARC Properties Limited under the government's new social housing program, NSHP, which is administered under the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. The house, which Eldermeyer will share with her 14-year-old son, Ron Clark, was handed over during a ceremony on December 14. Arc, Property. Arc Properties is the first private sector company making a contribution of this nature under the program. The handover exercise was led by Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who is Member of Parliament for the constituency. After being presented with the keys, an emotional Elder Meyer expressed gratitude for the kind gesture extended to her. I really appreciate this. It's been a very rough year. But as the songwriter says, when God says yes, no man can say no. I appreciate this so much and I'll maintain the house with my community because they have my back to help push me, she declared. The 37-year-old mother said that after being diagnosed with cancer approximately three years ago, she had to quit her job as a babysitter. Eldemeyer said she, thereafter, proceeded to do chemotherapy, which caused rapid weight loss and affected her ability to walk, talk, and eat. She also pointed out that her house, a board structure, gradually deteriorated over time. So it really took a toll on me, but I had my son beside me and he was my inside doctor, and I appreciate him. I just ask God to uplift him and push him more so he can do more to help someone else, just like someone else helped me, she said. Ron, who aspires to be a firefighter, said that the donation is a sign of improvements materializing for his family. I'm glad we have somewhere better to sit than in a board structure. I'm happy my mom got this house so we can stay healthy and feel better about ourselves, he said. Meanwhile, Olness disclosed that approximately 150 homes are expected to be donated to families living in similar conditions under the NSHP by the end of the year. While welcoming this anticipated outcome, he emphasized the need to scale up the construction and donation of homes under the program to assist in addressing the urgent need for housing solutions by the society's most vulnerable. We estimate, based upon the applications that have come into the office, that there are about 6,000 households in Jamaica that would qualify for this kind of intervention. We want to be able to turn out 100 of these per month if we're going to make the impact as quickly as possible, he stated. Olness disclosed that the ministry has asked the National Housing Trust to make a contribution to the process. We have allocated from the budget $500 million and we are, in the next fiscal year, seeking to increase the budgetary allocation to $1 billion, he added. Olness reiterated his call for private sector stakeholders to partner with the government on the program. We need to have private sector intervention. You may not be able to contribute the entirety of a house, but you may be able to assist with materials. You may be able to assist with financial support, anything that you can assist with, he said. Arc Properties Limited Chairman Norman Horn, in his remarks, disclosed that the house was built using funds derived from a percentage of the company's profits generated between 2021 and 2022. You cannot begin to imagine how satisfying it is for us at Arc, and each year, with God's blessing, We'll continue to do this, he said. At JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.